So in the previous lecture, we have seen the derivation part of projection operator. And now let us see a, an example and see how the actual projections can be calculated out of a given function. See, the job of a projection operator is to project out a part of function onto a irreducible representation so that we know that whatever function comes out is the basis of a given irreducible representation. So without wasting time, so let us actually try to take an example and see. C3V point group example because uh, we have seen the all the matrices and uh, we have no difficulty understanding how the matrices are obtained uh, for this particular point group now. So let's take an example of this point group. And what we are going to do is uh, we will consider a general function as of now, we are not taking any of the atomic orbital wave functions. We'll just consider a general wave, general function. Let us say x, z plus y, z plus z square. And uh, this particular example I'm taking, this is a solved example in cotton book. So if you have any difficulty understanding, you can also refer to cotton. But once we do this example, we should be through with uh, how to use projection operator and then we will take up unsolved examples also. Okay, so we will consider general function this under the C3V point group and see how to obtain function let's say out of this function which forms basis of E representation. So this E is the Mulliken symbol E, not the symmetry element E, okay, or symmetry operation. Okay, so let us first write down all the matrix elements for E representation for C3V point group. Okay, and now we have to expand on all the uh, symmetry operations because the matrices are different, right? So C3V, this is the E representation which we are talking about. Okay, so for E symmetry operator, we have, it's a two-dimensional representation because it's E. So this is, for C3, we have minus half, minus root 3 by 2, root 3 by 2, and minus half. For C3 square, so I'm not going to show you how to do this now because we have already discussed this. C3 square is minus half and this becomes plus and this element becomes negative. This remains as minus half. Then we have sigma, let's call it as xz let's say sigma v1 which is basically xz and one of the uh, vertical planes we can take along the axis and rest of the two will be in the middle of the axis so this will be 1 0 0 minus 1 and for the other two sigma v2 this also we have learned how to write the matrices right so I'm just writing it straight away. So you can work it out yourself how to do this. Okay, so now these are the matrix matrix elements. Now let us apply operators onto x, y, z. So 
so let us do it systematically so that because we are going to be using all of this so let's make a table out of it so here i'm going to write the function or the operator and here i'm going to write the function what happens to x what happens to y and what happens to z okay so when e is applied on x it's x and correspondingly y and z so nothing changes right now for c3 now we can use this matrix over here to be able to say what happens if we apply c3 onto x we get minus half x minus root 3 by 2 y okay when c3 is applied on y we get root 3 by 2 x so you have the matrix if you do it on x y whatever resultant you get you can just write over here this is minus half y so these two matrix elements are coming from here and here these two matrix elements are coming from here and here right and z remains as z because c3 is lying along z axis so similarly i'm just going to write all the resultants of various operators onto this So x and z does not change, y goes to minus y. So this is simple. Now for sigma v2, we have the matrix, so we'll just use that minus half x plus root 3 by 2 y root 3 by 2 x plus half y. All the planes are along z axis, so nothing changes there sigma v3 minus half x minus root 3 by 2 y minus root 3 by 2 x plus half y and z okay. so we now know what happens to each and every function upon these operations so now we calculate effect of these operators onto the given function so here we are calculating the projection out of x the given function which will have the symmetry or which will form the basis for e representation okay so that's why we have taken e representation matrix So let's say what happens if we apply e onto xz plus yz plus z square. So this remains same. Now what happens for c3? Let us calculate for c3. So we first have to calculate we already have listed down so we will first put here what happens to x multiplied by what happens to z similarly what happens to y and what happens to z and so on, right so this is easy it's just tedious calculation minus half x minus root 3 by 2 y multiplied by z so c3 on x gives you this c3 on z gives you z so that's how xz becomes this 
Now C3 on Y gives you root 3 by 2x minus half y and z remains as z and z remains as z right so now we can separate these out separate out the variables so if we take xz common so we will have xz coming from here also so we can write this as minus half 1 minus root 3 xz similarly i can take yz from here minus half root 3 plus 1 y z plus z square so this is the effect of c3 onto this function which is written over here so similarly let us calculate for the rest of the symmetry operators okay so for c3 square so now i will just write down the answers Okay, let's do it completely. Z it, X Z. So you should be able to calculate this one is easy. So again, I'll just uh, write down the final answer. So that's what so the calculation is uh, tedious but it is not difficult this is minus half one plus root three Z plus half minus root three plus one. Okay. So now let us calculate the projection of E IR representation onto this function. So let's calculate different matrix elements so projection of e matrix element 1 1 x z plus y z so remember that this is 2 cross 2 so we will have four elements of this 1 1 1 2 2 2 1 2 2 so we'll calculate one by one because this is a complete projection operator so we'll have four elements coming out of this so this one should have so the dimension will come over here order of the group is six so that will go 
here 2 by 6 so remember the formula li by h and then i have summation over all r so that means summation i have to take for all r now we have to take let's go back to the matrix element this matrix element over here and multiply it with the effect of e or a eh, sorry not this e effect of e onto the given function and put multiply that with this one okay so let's see how to do that in short i will write the function okay now next will be the corresponding matrix element which of c3 so c3 will have minus half and then the effect of c3 onto that function right that's what the projection operator formula says so now i'll have minus half and effect of c3 onto the function similarly for c3 square matrix i have minus half again and effect of c3 square onto the function and so on let us do it for one so that it is very very clear so 2 by 6 e effect of e will give you xz plus yz plus z square plus minus half effect of c3 onto the function was minus half let's use the square brackets again 1 minus square root 3 exit minus half 1 plus root 3 yz plus z square so this is the matrix element of c3 multiplied by effect of c3 onto the function and similarly you do this so the if you do this complete calculation the answer here what you will get will be exit i mean you have to trust me on this because i have done this calculation and it's also solved in cotton but here due to lack of time so we'll not do it here so i expect you to completely do it by hand so please take this as home assignment and do this calculation similarly so the way we have calculated for p11 that is the 11 element of e irreducible representation of this so let's also calculate p e 2 2 xz plus yz plus z square and if we do the same thing what we will get is yz without any coefficient so this one gives you xz 2 2 element will give you yz similarly we can do it for 1 2 and 2 1 so they will also give you the same thing so p i think 1 2 e on projection operated onto this function gives you yz and p21 xz plus yz plus z square gives you xz right so all of this gives you this thing so this implies that this particular projection projection of xz plus yz plus z square on e i r representation is nothing but a linear combination xz plus yz and if you want to normalize you can divide square root of the sum of squares of coefficient which will give you one by root two so this is how the projection of this will be calculated on a given ir representation so now if we try to use this as the basis 
we will see that this thing forms basis of e i r representation okay so out of a given function we have what we have achieved here is we have achieved the part which is relevant for e representation and rest of the part is basically neglected so when we take this projection what we get is this and we know that now this thing will form the basis of e representation right so that is the job of uh, a projection operator so here we are dealing with full matrix elements like this so we needed the whole all uh, matrices but in this particular case when we deal with incomplete projection operator we will be dealing with only traces and the calculation is much simpler so that's all for today so please do calculate all the components yourself and complete this calculation and see for yourself if you are getting this thing as a result thank you very much mm -hmm.